Hi guys and welcome back to my Eurovision channel, Eurovision Chris, where I am reviewing, reacting, uh, discussing the Eurovision winners of the national finals going to Malmö to represent their countries uh, in May of this year. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Bambi Thug because the, obviously this song is very, it's, it's Marmite. A lot of people are reacting negatively, a lot of people are reacting positively. And I think in some cases it's me meaning they're missing some of the hidden things that are like hidden in this performance that I love. As an Irishman, I have to admit, I, I only studied Irish for three years, so I'm not like a, an expert on Irish language or history. But there are some things in this performance that really stick out as very Irish and they're very understated. And I think that it's important that we kind of realize that there's a lot of Irish, uh, what's the word? Oh my God, my brain has gone blank on this uh, day. Inspiration. <laughs> I needed some inspiration myself for that. Uh, a lot of inspiration has come from Irish history. Um, so we're going to go through the video and the, the song as well. Uh, of course, we can't not listen to Bambi and their incredible uh, performance, in my view, because I love it. It was my favorite song the first time I heard it on the radio, well, podcast. Um, and uh, I want to go through the song and the live reaction and kind of explain a little bit when things happen. One thing I want to list you to kind of listen out for are the lyrics. I think the lyrics, I mean, it's very clear from the start that, you know, the first two words are Avada Kedavra, which have obviously people associate with Harry Potter, but actually it means like, to, I don't know the exact translation, but it literally means like destruction of the soul. So like I destroy your soul um, and it doesn't come from Harry Potter. It's before that. I just don't know where from which language, um, but that's the essence. So already at the start, you get Bambi portraying themselves as a witch. And that sets the tone for a lot of the performance, apart from the kind of the, the middle parts, the middle chorusy parts where it's a bit more bluesy but the other thing I want you to kind of pay attention to in this video as well uh, listening to it is the undergoing heartbeat which I just noticed recently it's like dump 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 and it goes like pretty much throughout the song apart from like the really heavy bits and that ties into the second verse where um, Bambi says my heart Beat bear, my, my heartbeat buried in the ground to your strings I bind your bound the poetry in this is incredible like the lyrics are really something special and they have they can be taken in a number of different ways Bambi expressed uh, themselves in the pre-video that the, the lyrics were um, meant to be about someone who uh, it does, it has their potential ignored and um and therefore uh is uh you know struggling i guess with that and annoyed that their their potential is being ignored uh, for me i i kind of also see you know hints of like broken relationships in there and the way uh, people were treated or you know how people perceive things in uh, other people uh in in friendships or relationships um so with that in mind, uh, let's go to the, the start of the song and uh, it already kind of starts like heavy, obviously. We all know this song by now. So there was a slight audio mix up when I uploaded or when I recorded this the last time. So I have to re-record it, um, but the message is going to stay the same. So let's go. Kicking in with the heavy stuff already. Listen out for that heartbeat when it kicks in. You say about Kadavra. About Kadavra, witch straight away. Paganism. 
And then in the background, the eyes. That's the first Irish alphabet. This kind of spookiness of like Halloween. Halloween is the first. Well, first. Halloween was comes from Ireland, an Irish like ancient Celtic pagan festival um, called Samhain. Um, and it basically was a symbol of the end of the harvest season and kind of moving into the darker days of winter. And we have the switch up here, and now we go back into the amazing lyrics. Listen for the heartbeat. I'll be silent. You see what I mean? It brings it so well together, and then these ancient, like, Celtic symbols in the background and the symbols of ancient Ireland and basically a landscape that could easily come from any part of the Irish countryside and then this doesn't this is just like a fantastical castle um, which kind of gives off this element of you know I don't know like I don't know this is a part I still have to decipher like what the meaning behind the imagery is you've got the image of the moon there um, obviously Bambi themselves implying that they're the moon. I love this bit. This is a vocal moment and it's when Bambi really can show off their vocal skills which are incredible live. I have seen them live after this sh show like in a pub at 1am <laughs> the same night. The vocals are incredible, and this this song needs a vocal moment so it can show that Bambi can sing very well. And this, Blue. Blue. ignore the audience. The audience are irrelevant in this because this is just the setup of the system in in Ireland for the national final. Um, so focusing on the performance, this final breakdown, clock going back. Time is going back, you know, the spell is working, but they're reaching out from like the ground to like cast this spell on the person and then destroy their soul. And there you go. Yeah, there's a lot to take in. I know there's a lot to take in, and you are. If you're a first time listener, obviously you're going to love it or hate it, but you will notice it. And the other thing is that um, for those of us that are fans that have kind of been following like all of the Eurovision songs, this still definitely stands out in a genre of its own. There are songs that are kind of fitting into the rocky genre, fitting into the, the kind of more like, well, I mean, Raven from Slovenia is portraying a story about someone drowned for witch, witchcraft. Um, and, uh, but Raven themselves is not, or herself is not really pretending to be a witch. It's a story and it's kind of enacting that story. Bambi is fully embracing the role of being a witch. Um, and so whether you like it or not, that's, the role that they're embracing in this portrayal and this song. Um, and Doomsday Blue, like for me, is just a masterpiece of sw like switching off tempos and songs. I know people think it's chaotic and messy. For me, it flows. It just flows really, really well. This may be because I grew up in a house full of music in Ireland and we blend a lot of different sounds together like we always have these traditional like sing songs where someone has a guitar someone has a violin someone has a boron whatever and people are just singing along and then you move straight on to another song could be a completely different vibe maybe that's why this doesn't bug me as much as it seems to bug a lot of other people the transitions like from the the blue stage here to the kind of the calm bluesy music which is very typical in Ireland, like that bluesy music. If you're at a Irish house and you're having a sing song or in a pub, this is the type of music you're going to hear. Um, and then I also like love the color palette, like, uh, 
you know, kind of lightening here, but still twilighty, not fully bright. And then like, you know, trying to kind of, I, I, I don't know, I guess I interpret it as gathering themselves a little bit, but then the anger starts to rise again and you get like this moment where it's just like coming towards the end of this and it's like you can see the anger already and portrayed really well in uh in this and back to the so and then as soon as bambi says blue it's stripped back to blue and stripped back to the breakdown of the song and like boom 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 and the scream one thing about the scream i I mean, I, first of all, this is not a goth song. Bambi may be portraying as a goth uh, in some respects in this, but this is not a goth, goth song. Um, it blends so many different genres in an excellent way, in my opinion. Um, but growing up, like I would have often been at those type of like concerts or shows or friends of mine and bands would have been playing like heavy music not necessarily goth music but heavy metal um and the thing with bambi and the scream is that they are able to essentially take a really high pitched scream and then make it lower and lower and lower on the register this is a really off the wall comparison. But if you think about the range in Jean's Tears uh, from Switzerland in 2021, 2020 as well, and the range in his voice, Bambi has the same thing with that scream. Like it goes like really high pitched to low, 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 low. And then this like maniacal laughter after. And I just think like it's a it's a masterpiece of how to perform. It's performance art. Uh, you may like it, you may not, um, but it's not in any way. I, I personally don't see it in any way offensive. Um, I think it's a great portrayal of history um, through a modern and contemporary art style. Um, Bambi being an independent artist also adds a lot to that. So those are my thoughts that I wanted to kind of just bring on, on Bambi and, uh, and the Irish entry this year because we have to qualify, but we're in such a hard semi-final. It's really, really hard. Um, so I would love for people to take their time to understand um, and also to listen a little bit more to Bambi and their back catalogue because their back catalogue is incredible as well. Um, if you want to hear the vocal quality, I would recommend Love Bites as a song. If you want to hear something more similar to Doomsday Blues, but like more like constant on the, the kind of the heavy theme, uh, probably Tsunami. Uh, ironically, in brackets, it's 1111, which is the name of Megara's entry this year <laughs> for San Marino. Um, but uh, I would I would highly recommend checking those two songs out and Egregor, uh, which um, has a really, really cool chorus as well. Uh, so it shows a diversity of genres of Bambi already. And um, like the Im people have talked a lot about the image. I think uh, what we see here may not be exactly what we get in Malmo in terms of Bambi themselves and how they are portrayed are portraying themselves we might have brand new uh, uh costumes etc and uh and uh styling so let's see for that i anticipate huge elevation on this uh for the staging and i have like complete trust in how bambi's going to do it so those are my thoughts um I wanted to do a reaction i i did want to wait for the music video but it's coming yeah i don't know if i'm It'll be too late by then. So I wanted to put out a reaction to Bambi Thug and Ireland. Here you go. And I wanted to explain some things about the song that I see from an Irish perspective that maybe other people from other cultures don't recognize necessarily as being Irish because they have their own perception of what Irish culture is, which tends to be typically, you know, twiddly uh, 
you know, kind of traditional music, which is what, to be fair, Ilsha, who came second in uh, the national final, tried to do with Gatubin, make it make uh, this Irish traditional music contemporary. Um, also a wonderful song in studio version. It just didn't click that well on the night, whereas Bambi on the night was miles ahead in terms of quality, working with what all the artists had in that studio. It was just, it just blew me away. Like I was at the watch party, I met Bambi after and uh, they performed again and it was so much fun. Um, and they are the most wonderful person. Um, so I highly recommend looking a little bit more into uh, the song, the meanings, the Irish symbolism there, the history that's referenced, all of the hidden messages, that heartbeat that I just got yesterday, a month after this song won, I finally twigged on the heartbeat. And a week ago, it was the Borons, I think. I think it was the Borons. Uh, so those are two things that I, I think that uh, you should uh, kind of also bear in mind. There's so much going on in this that it's hard to kind of pin down certain things. So I leave it at that. Um, and just again wish Bambi all the best in uh in Malmo I mean whatever the result I mean Bambi has done Ireland already so proud I mean we've taken a risk and uh they deserve to go to Malmo and they they deserve to go to the final uh so let's just hope there's a pathway that we can get there for Bambi because I want to be at that jury final on, on Friday night screaming and singing along to this and uh, with also with the poetic lyrics as well. So Bambi, all the best. I'm rooting for you so hard um, and let's get Ireland back in the final and I have no doubt you can do that. No doubt whatsoever. So thank you everybody for watching. If you want to hear more videos from me and more reactions and more discussion, I will do maybe some more deep dives into other songs. Um, but for now, uh, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please comment. Also, if any Irish people are watching this and the boron is not right, please call me out on it because I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it's the boron, the drums. Um, I think it's just a heavier boron sound, like really upped in ante. Call me out now. Otherwise, have a lovely day and thanks for tuning in to this relatively long video, but I feel like this deserved quite uh, an explanation and that Bambi deserves it. So lots of love to everybody. Peace. Bye.